morning Good from morning. San Francisco. Hi, I'm Rumiana Williams. I'm an experienced design manager at Adobe, uh, based out of the New York office, but I'm here in San Francisco with Kat Lowe. Hello. Uh, third day in a row. Man, so sad it, that I know. is the last day and This is our last tears. day. We had so much fun <laughs> this week. Yeah, so we have a full day of fun. We will be here for only two hours, our last two hours. Uh, but then after us, uh, you will have Lauren, hosted by Mark, and then Josh at one, hosted by Michael. So um, first, I think the most important thing is we have a winner from yesterday Yay! Uh, from the challenge. And uh, his name is Sal, and I can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Sal Swag. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the design. So it's six screens. Uh, the challenge to remind you was to uh, design um, a fashion blog using a template we send in XD. And um, the objective was to use the prototyping function. So this looks awesome visually wow, but I also know. has some really nice transitions so i'm gonna enter the blog so there's a nice um transition here uh there is an about page that looks beautiful too i'm loving the typography me the too page. and i think there's one more yep there's another swipe so really nice um movement yeah i really love it me too i love the congratulations and everything awesome thank so, you so yeah sal work. gets a free year of uh, creative cloud wow that's so which is amazing. awesome I know. yeah and uh hello to everyone in the chat uh, please tell us where you're from and if you've been watching us for the past two days uh, also, feel free to send us any questions. We had some fantastic questions uh, the past couple days, so don't stop. Uh, Kat will be designing for a third day, uh, but we're also going to have a prize for anyone who chats. So log hey. in to Behance, chat, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Um, today we don't have a challenge, uh, but we will be doing portfolio reviews um, probably an hour and a half into our segment. And uh, you will be able to do those as well with the other two segments. So send your portfolio. Uh, we'd love to see it. We'd love to give you feedback and help you improve. And uh, what else do we have? We have a recap from yesterday. Yeah, cool. Um, so or to get started. Hello, everyone. If you're just tuning in, my name is Catherine Lowe. Um, my Behance is at Miss Cat Lowe to go there. And I have a first project that will have a little bit more information about the assets, the presentations that we've done in the last two days, and a list of books and resources where you can learn more about UX um, after our, our three-day video. <laughs> So nice to meet you all and good morning. I see a lot of people that were here from all over yesterday. The world too. Yeah, and actually we've gotten one question. Is it worth it to learn XD if you already know how to design in Photoshop? Yes. Yes, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Because Photoshop wasn't really made to do UI design, but you can use Photoshop for UI. It's just that there are a lot of features in XD that just make the whole mm -hmm. process a lot faster, quicker, easier to update and modify if mm -hmm. you are doing a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. So definitely use XD yes. if you're doing UI work. It's faster and it's easier, but you can always supplement with Photoshop for anything that needs a little bit more image creation. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's, it's a magical tool, but I think XD is super quick to learn. So it's, it's going to be a different learning curve from Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nathan, from yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> he says, yo. And Eric, who's been here all three days. Yep. We're talking about you know how often you stay on live, and it's pretty awesome to see people kind of mm -hmm. tuning in and following along. Cool. So uh, a little bit about me. I've been a designer for a while now. <laughs> My background is in print and packaging, visual design, and I moved to interaction and web interfaces. 
And for the last six years, I've focused more on iOS, UI, UX development and design. Um, so these are the two of the more recent work I've done previously. So one is the watch app that allows you to respond to quick questions. And the other one is a more intense visualization tool for the iPad. Uh, currently, I am a self-employed uh, designer in New York City. So basically, I help businesses conceptualize, idealize, design, and help them kind of figure out uh, what they, what their problems are and how do we solve them. Uh, currently, I work with a remote agency called Martian Craft, and we basically are a team of really, really smart people that get together and develop software for the desktop, for Mac, and primarily iOS, but we also do a little bit of Android designs. So I wanted to share a little bit about our our company. Um, our team of developers, we, we obviously work on client projects, but a lot of us actually work on a lot of side projects too. So just for fun. So in 2016, um, Apple kind of released their stickers on the iMessage platform, their stickers feature. So what we typically do is we come to San Francisco to attend the WWDC, which is the developer conference. We kind of watch uh, videos and see what's coming up and what's, what's sort of in the design world to stay updated. And right after we watch that, we try to create a project right away from those presentations. So this is actually <laughs> my cat, Cat's Cat. <laughs> so wow, that's awesome. Um, one of our developers decided, hey, let's check it out. I mean, let's make some stickers. So he went and created a bunch of stickers and put it in the App Store. And we launched those stickers on the first day of iOS 11. <laughs> so I said, hey, I'll help you out. I'll help you out with the assets that you need. In return, would you make stickers for, for me, for my cat? <laughs> so. I did this in about two hours. I went to my archive of my cat images. I cut it up, sent it to him, and it's in the App Store. So if you'd like to use it, please go to, sorry, this is only on iOS, so it's only on um, an iPhone or iPad. You basically hit the button for search for stickers, and you type in mail stickers, or I'll have this link in my portfolio if you would like it. This is awesome. What's your cat's name? Blue. Blue. For blue color. Oh. So he's basically the cat from the meme, uh, the heavy oh. breathing cat. Okay. Which is like the cool. cat where his face kind of <laughs> expand and contract and doesn't move. This well, that's awesome. basically him. So obviously, this is actually a real life <clears throat> test. The middle screen where I said, mm -hmm. this is a career moment I will never forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does your cat have an Instagram? Yeah, he does have of an Instagram. Of course he does. Who doesn't? Of course. It's Cat Kitty, <laughs> K-I-T-T-I-E. Because man, like short URLs are just impossible to find. So it's funny. Uh, tell us if you're a cat or a dog person in the yeah, chat. Yeah, if you're a cat or a dog person. Or a bunny. I'm mm -hmm. an animal person. I love animals too. <laughs> Do you have any pets? Or? No, unfortunately, no. Would I want wanna, to. I want a want? dog. <laughs> But yeah, you know what? It's, it's kind of hard to have a dog in New York City. Yeah, and like no, I mean it's hard to find an apartment where uh, dog dogs friendly. are allowed. Cats are more allowed than dogs. So I wanted a dog, but it's a lot easier to have a cat. Yeah. So that's why I have a cat. Yeah. Okay, so that's my fun fact of the day. Cool. Um, a little recap about our project in general. So this, uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, uh, we are designing a mobile app for this company mm -hmm. called Pollen Inc. And Pollen Inc. is a fictional store, uh, it's a floral shop that provides crafted bespoke florals made by you. So basically the idea is that the user can select a color and variation of the flower they would like to arrange. And um, after we take that, um, experienced floral designer will put that together and then deliver it to you or to your friends. So they decided that they would like to create a mobile app to show that experience so that they could in increase sales, build engagement, and obviously 
uh, encourage their current customers to purchase more. Um, and then, so the whole design process is kind of uh, long and winded. So for the three three day segment, I decided to try to do a more simple design process. And the first day, we could definitely uh, de uh, we talked about design strategy. We defined you know who our users are. We had ideas, we brainstormed, and then we quickly went into a prototype uh, design with visuals. Uh, yesterday, we continued on uh, refining the visual graphics, and then today we're going to be talking mostly on the last two bubbles, which is analyzing and rebuilding and redefining to see if everything that we've made actually makes sense. And we spent a good amount of time uh, doing prototyping yesterday as well. Yeah. Which was um, fun. Yeah, so day two, this was yesterday. These are the features that we added onto our original design. Um, we've refined some re uh, visual refinements. We linked our artboards together and used the overlay. And um, we also added some upgrade uh, sizes for the flowers. So basically upselling a more expensive uh, arrangement. So better, best, equi exquisite, and different price points. And then we also added an ability to add and change your flower vase with a little fun AR that was exploration fun. where we can kind of see like what your arrangement will look like and mm -hmm. actively scroll through the vases in real time. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be focusing in more about the analyzing and iterating. So talking about uh, analyzing, um, I want to kind of put this graphic out there as a simple thought, which is desirability. Do we really want this feature? Do we want this design? Uh, vi <laughs> viability is, do we really do this? And feasibility is, can we actually do it? So definitely ask all these questions while you're designing. And what you want to be is obviously right in the middle mm -hmm. of all those. Um, so this is just something for you to think about while designing, but this kind of Venn diagram is actually a very uh, similar parallel to how you develop any kind of software. Because in terms of software, um, the business tells you the goals of what they want you to solve. Um, obviously, the design um, kind of helps come up with solutions to those goals, and we talk about those and development are the people that need to actually make it work. So it's really important that all of these circles all align. Yeah. And, and for us, I think it's important to talk about the role of design because we are represent, I mean, we're advocates for the user. So many times we really, really have to make sure that our users are heard um, the business might sometimes forget or development because there's obstacles in the way, but we're here to make, um, we make, we make this something for the user, so we have to represent them. And this is actually just a, this is the picture that you actually want, but it's, it's not always this way. Yes. It's actually, in fact, never aligned. No. <laughs> because <laughs> a so business easy. might be over here, design might be yeah. here, and development might be saying, hey, that's that's crazy, we can't do that, or mm -hmm. it's going to take a long time. And it's there's a lot of uh, different moving pieces involved. It has to do with maybe the cost of time, return mm -hmm. of investment, which is like, a, a, this idea, is it going to take a long time to create? Mm -hmm. And what do I actually get out of it? Should I? try doing something that's like a little bit easier, low hanging fruit, or like putting it out there quickly and see how people respond. And this is why we need to prototype stuff quickly and get it out there for people to get feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do I work in a waterfall or agile methodology? That's always the million dollar question. Million dollar question. <laughs> I actually prefer, I actually do a little bit of both. Yeah. I think that's the answer, depending on who, um, the client, really. Some people really love the waterfall method, which is just going down in a systematic way, and it's very organized, which is very nice. But sometimes working with different businesses and different scales, so you have people sort of in a small group, small startup. You have people in a medium-sized business where they have 
sort of, um, they have money and they have resources and they have some developers and designers in-house. And then you have very big corporations that have a lot of developers and a lot of designers. So you really need to be agile with how you want to showcase and mm -hmm. work. And that's why I say this is such a great experience, just checking out different companies and asking, how do you guys actually design? How do you go about working on a project? Like, right, because everywhere is different. Everywhere is different. Yeah. I would say for us at Adobe, we're kind of in the middle. We are doing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Whatever works, I mean, depends on the project, where we are at. Um, mm -hmm. Engineering definitely works in Agile, but Agile. Design, mm -hmm. design is sort of fitting in however works. Mm -hmm. It's much more organic, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely there's like, go and check out some companies and be yes. that. That's actually why I loved just checking out companies in NSF. I always ask this question, how mm -hmm. do you guys work? Do you have one designer, one developer, one PM person on a one feature and you guys rotate? Or is it more like, uh, you know, a group of people work on a group of features and mm -hmm. a group of people decide this and then, because a lot of the time you need to be aligned with everyone else in the company and not just yeah. like working um, in your silo, so. Mm -hmm. Do you consider yourself a UI, UX designer or developer? Do I'm you do definitely any development? not. I'm definitely not a developer. But you said you had experience. Yeah, um, I have some experience, <clears throat> but it's if you're trying to be a really good UX and UI developer, I think you should you should learn a little bit about how the code works. Yep. And in terms of iOS design, it's very easy to kind of test out, play around with some mm -hmm. apps. Um, there's an app that in the app store that teaches you how to like start coding in Swift. Um, from the Apple Store, and the idea from Apple is that everyone should have access to learn how to code, even in a basic level. So the Swift Learning app is really mm -hmm. geared towards kids and anyone. That's great. So you can kind of learn how yeah. how the code actually works, so it can make you a better designer in terms of the UI, which is like saying, okay, I would like a pop-up, I would like a modal, I would like the screen to push. Um, how do you know that? Well, that's the way it's being done in that platform. Mm -hmm. And it's different yep. in terms of, okay, you're designing for iOS, you're designing for Android. You it's should different. know how the software actually gets coded. Yeah, and what are the limitations? I think it's important to know the limitations, not so much to do mm -hmm. yourself, because obviously it takes us a long time to mm -hmm. do things that engineers will do in like two seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why you need to talk. You need to say, okay, while well, the client is dreaming up this crazy interaction and you can always steer them towards uh, building something that's mm -hmm. more systematic and more aligned with like the, the interface guidelines, which Android and mm -hmm. uh, Google, they publish how it's supposed to be done. The reason is because their design and development is mm -hmm. always changing mm -hmm. like year to year mm -hmm. and instead of sort of working in a in a one silo you mm -hmm. have to think in a future tense like hey next year if they come out with a new phone they come out with a new device uh, you want to future proof your design right uh, Eric Sue actually had a question to the chat <laughs> thank you and it was how does everyone work like if you are a UI UX designer how do you work like are you alone on your team? Do you have other designers? Um, how many engineers do you do any of the work? Are you waterfall or um, agile? agile. Mm -hmm. So let us know. And I missed, there was another question as well, I think about. <clears throat> oh yeah, in how UI, do you UI find, how do you? How do you find the right work project fit? I think that's a really good question. Yeah, that's very, um, it's very difficult at first when you're starting out because you're just mm -hmm. kind of feeling around. Um, so let's say that I don't have a lot of experience working as UX person or UI person. Um, one of the things I can do is practice. And that's why we have these UX challenges every day is mm -hmm. to help you practice and come up with ideas and design quickly and then get feedback. and. Um, I would say that uh, if you try to work in a startup environment, you are more likely to learn faster than, this is my opinion, learn faster than joining a company. Mm -hmm. Because in a startup environment, you have to be all hands. You have to be the Swiss knife. So 
you have to do everything because you're the only person and that helps you learn you just you just jump into the deep end of the pool and you just throw your hands up and do it you seem you seem to have the right personality because like what i got from you for over these three days is that you're just if you don't know something you go and learn it fake it till you make it <laughs> but that's the right attitude and you you seem to be very brave too you just go and you figure it out and just be honest and say you know i i I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I will succeed, but I'm going to try. Here are the things um, I can always teach myself. Always Google it. Um, yep. <laughs> Google is probably the worst comment because you can Google <laughs> anything. You can find a video on YouTube. You can find articles on mm -hmm. Medium. There's always someone saying something, and you can always learn something just by reading or you can ask. I mean, there's great communities out there. And I think Behance is a great community. And it seems like this chat is too. Mm -hmm. You can always ask. Um, people are super friendly and ready to respond. Yeah, I mean, like just send them a message mm -hmm. on their Behance profile. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would be pretty happy to take a look at your project, answer um, a lot of questions about how do you work and how do you mm -hmm. find the right clients that suit you. But. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you something about winging it. I think in general, this is my life's uh, kind of philosophy, <laughs> is that you can never know everything. Yeah. There is impossible. Yeah. So by the time, if you think you know everything, you actually don't know anything. But you're also not learning. If you know everything, it's like, it's not interesting anymore. You, you, you always need to be doing something mm -hmm. where you're learning, right? Mm -hmm. You don't take a job that you know everything about. Uh, you're always learning. There's a great question about favorite process to present UX project in Behance. Oh yeah, um, I really think it's really important in a project that you always explain and state the constraints in which you're trying to design in because mm -hmm. you have to say here are the problems I was presented in or here are the issues that are asked of me to do and then here are the range of solutions that I've came up with. So you want to show range and say, all right, here, here are the 10 things I brewed up and I'm going to pick the top three mm -hmm. or the three that make sense to me. And here's why I picked those three. And then here's the design of how um, I translated those three to, because mm -hmm. it's, it's just too broad and you can really design infinite things. There's a million different solutions for one problem. So if you want to have success in the solution, then you should just present the range so that you can demonstrate that you thought about it in a right. deep way. And then um, in terms of the design wise, that's more of a UI technical uh, improvement. So mm -hmm. you can always improve Mm -hmm. on using the program better, mm -hmm. how to design better, but that's more of a technical skill set that I think you can achieve just by practicing. But design thinking and showing that process is, is, not, uh, is not as easy because you have to really learn by just working on different projects. And I personally, I always went to a different project. Like I wanted to be challenged. I wanted to be a, be challenged. Yeah. Like I always went to a different company mm -hmm. of a different size. Maybe I go join an agency. Maybe I do an in-house mm -hmm. project, and I'd work with um, a startup with only one founder or two people. Just see how you know how people how people are in That's general. That's a great attitude to have. Um, what is the most difficult task you have encountered when doing UI UX design? Mm -hmm. Um, difficult task. I don't, I think difficult task is really about selling your design. And that is actually not about design, it's actually about selling. <laughs> so I think one of the most difficult things for a designer is learning how to speak, how to sell, and how to write. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very important thing that people don't talk about that much is that um, you're expecting to do this design work that is beautiful and great, but it's just as important, if not more important, to be able to sell someone that this is this is what they asked for. Mm -hmm. Here are the solutions and why you should buy in on me. Mm -hmm. And this is a, and then also not feel too um, too comfortable with your design. 
always feel like you can kill your baby. Meaning, <laughs> meaning that if you're loving you're your attached. design, you're you not have emotionally to know. attached, right? You have you cannot be too emotionally attached mm -hmm. because it's not personal. It's and not. I think that's one thing that is very challenging for beginning designers is that they get tied to this one beautiful design, one idea, but your business person is not you. So maybe right. they don't see your point of view. Mm -hmm. They don't feel mm -hmm. like this is be this is pretty mm -hmm. or this is uh, the right solution for me. And it's more like a chameleon. Like think like yep. them. Think like in this the person asking you to do it. Think like in their brain. What what makes them say your design doesn't make sense and how to navigate mm -hmm. the waters of like them saying they don't mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I was saying yesterday mm -hmm. that I don't like this. It's probably the worst feedback. Yep. And that just is sort of like a, a, a tip to say, all right, start asking questions. Start asking this person, is it the visual design that you don't like? Is it the colors you don't like? Typography? Right. Is it the way it works? The UX? Does it make sense to you? Or like what? What about mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Be specific. So yeah, yeah, uh, I think that's really important. And there was a question about how do you get started? How do you even get an internship when you're you have no experience and no formal education? Um, be humble and beg. That's how I did it. Do your um. do the <laughs> challenge. Do the challenge. Get those portfolio pieces. I mean, this is good. Be humble and just like yeah. you know what I did. I'll tell you. What when did I you first do? moved to New York, no one wanted to hire me because I was a student from another state, and New York City is cutthroat. Oh yeah. So if you don't have any internships in New York City, people are like, I don't know. I don't know where you're from, and I don't know your projects. I don't care. Mm -hmm. You what never worked you here. To? Oh, I uh, uh, I went to University of Maryland College Park. Oh yeah, Park. so no one cares about any university in no. another state if you don't go to SVA, Pratt. No, it's because York it's not done. a it's not a New York City school. So yep. it's it's just mm -hmm. like well, I don't know. I don't know who you are. I don't. I, they'll, they'll just gloss over it. So what you need to do is when you have the, your foot in the door. You know, that's all you need. But how do you get the foot in the door? I mean, I think that's the most challenging part for anyone. I mean, in any profession, it's hard. I think for design, it's harder because we get judged on a portfolio. My advice would be figure out what is it that interests you about it and like try to f make a portfolio and put it on Behance and get get someone to critique it for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're super open to do it. We'll do mm -hmm. it. Um, and do the daily challenge. Uh, I think those are super nice because we're giving you a template and you have the chance to get a critique and uh, improve. So figure out what is it that you want to do and just do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So like in terms of like when I said I just begged mm -hmm. is when you if someone was willing to mm -hmm. give you an interview, really go in and be humble and say I'm willing to do anything. I'm really to uh, take your direction. Um, just put yourself out there and, and say... And believe in yourself. Right. You don't suck at everything. <laughs> believe in yourself. Say you'll, you know, you're you're open to learning, mm -hmm. willing to spend mm -hmm. the hours to make it right. Yep. And just, you know, do everything you can. Say, say yes to everything. Yes. And even just get a client, I mean, like a coffee shop or someone that needs help. I think that could get you out there. Another thing, Something. oh, I just thought about this. You can, another thing is you can also do free work, yes. which actually is very helpful. Yeah. I know it, it's going to take time from mm -hmm. your day, but doing work and giving that work out to the world for free gives you more marketing, gives yep. you more um, like spotlight on you. you just, work on stuff and offer it for free. Like go to your local coffee shop, like you said, and say, hey, can I help out in any way? Um, right. Can Everyone I... needs a website these days. Yeah, uh -huh. right. And of course, once you, you and know, do, um, there's right. multiple examples of tons of famous de uh, designers that did free work for someone right. for just a little um, project. Mm -hmm. And then they were impressed with you. They Maybe they like you a lot. And, and, and in terms of technical skill set, you can always get better, but people always want to work with someone they like and their personality. Yes. 
Nice. Um, <laughs> and yes, be nice. And then they get more. Oh wait, it's time for chat and win. Oh, oh my god, awesome. we've been. We'll be right back. <laughs> Keep chatting. Uh, so we have chat and win. It kind of snuck on us. <laughs> ask a good question. We're chatting quick, with all these great quick, questions. Quick, ask quick. a question. Oh, do you have a pet? What's your favorite animal if you don't have a pet? This is our <laughs> theme for the day, is pets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Dogs. Maybe dogs, cats. Dogs. Those are good words because they like go quickly. Quick. I mean, three. <laughs> Dog, cats. Cats. Fish. Fish. Yep. We got Pugs. carried away with all our <laughs> advice. <laughs> and yes, surround yourself with like-minded people. I think there was a comment earlier about that. Um, that's always helpful. I mean, the cliche is like go to networking events. Sometimes those can be intimidating. scary, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you never know. I mean, sometimes you might meet people that you really like and something comes out of it. Oh, and oh, we have a winner! Then. Yay! Jonathan! Yay. Congratulations! Um, you win $30 gift card from Moo.com where you can print some beautiful um, cards, stickers, anything you want to bring to those networking events. Yeah. Yeah. Meet new friends. Meet new friends. Give give those away. I mean, this is a good good way to advertise yourself. Uh, for anyone who didn't win, you actually win as well. Uh, you can get 15% uh, off just by um, going on moo.com um, slash Adobe Live. So you are always also a winner. So everyone's a winner today. And we also have portfolio reviews. Um, so don't forget, um, I guess those, those will be coming soon. Maybe we should get designing. Yeah, cool. We'll keep, but keep asking us questions. We will respond, yes. Cool, so um, to recap, um, in the very beginning of our first day, we talked about who are our customers. And there's millennials who are 18 to 30, who likes the personalization aspect, who want to purchase flowers to impress their guests, and they buy on impulse. And then we have the second um, groups of people who are basically customers from Pollen and they have high appreciation for flowers, they love it already, and they want to buy more for their friends. So for our design on day one and day two, we focus more of our core customers, people who buy already, mm -hmm. um, who just want to have a better experience, but we haven't really talked about the millennials, like how do we get them to purchase if they're not, um, used to purchasing from the web and they want to buy sort of from the supermarket because it's convenient or maybe there's a price point mm -hmm. um, that they like and but they do want uh, more flowers occasionally or m more often than a regular uh, buying for someone so uh, these are some of my ideas and in terms of like uh, feedback that we've gotten one of the feedback that we got yesterday. So this is like a fake feedback. Yeah, like sure. a client would give you feedback. Yes. Right. Right. Because we're trying to show a real scenario. Yeah, we're trying to show a real scenario. We already finished sort of our design yesterday, so we're getting some feedback now. And what what, what should we do? Well, mm -hmm. the first one, the first bullet point was something that we talked about yesterday, which is. Well, the flow of it is pretty simple. We don't have a lot of tabs. We don't have a lot of sections. So let's add more stuff. So we add, we were adding discovery tab, um, IDing a flower, uh, curating personalization, and allowing uh, shopping and cart and profile. So uh, one of the feedback is when the customer is purchasing and going through the purchase cycle, there's no clear clarity on shopping, meaning that mm -hmm. it just had a screen that said, hey, your order's finished and just wait for it. So they would like to have more clarity, meaning they want to see, you know, what's the status? Is it being made? Um, where is it right now? Can I see a map of when it's going to get delivered to me or my friend? Second thing is um, we introduced the idea of, of favoriting something, a color, a flower arrangement from a list, but where does what does that do? 
um, what's the functionality of having stuff favorited? How does that have to do with anything, of any flow? What's, um, so we're thinking that the description for having a favorite is allowing someone to not only quickly add a list of things they like, but we can also say, well, maybe we introduce a personalization aspect instead of customization. So customization is when we selected the color, selected the flower type, and then display me a list. A personalization is saying, show me some examples of the arrangements based on the things that I, I favorited. So that's what's powering or, th or um, sort of the back end of how the Discover tab kind of works or operates. It's like it's showing me examples. And the last one is obviously a, a clear, easy one, which is I can only check out now with Apple Pay. So if I don't have Apple Pay, can I put a credit card? Um, that makes total sense from a business standpoint. It's like I want everyone to be able to buy it. Right, because not everyone has Apple Pay set up. Um, yep. Yep. So let's just take a look at all look, of those. Should we look at the design again in case there's someone new who joins us for the first time? Welcome. Mm -hmm. If you're new and you have no idea what we've been doing, <laughs> yes. I love I love the design of this app. So oh, I cool. want to see Thank it again. You. And you did some awesome prototyping yesterday. Yeah, we said we press the play button and you can kind of see it on the side, how the app is doing. So this is the launch screen. And uh, the launch screen opens up right to sort of an easy description, a marketing page that says, you know, it's like what's... a first time experience. Yes, mm -hmm. it's like three sections. Those are big. I mean, this is huge. You always have to think about those first time experiences because we always like go deep into the meat of the app. But I think those will always no... get less, yeah, left for last. Right, and there's a lot of different <laughs> things that you can do with this mm -hmm. layout. I mean, you could do one bullet point and then it scrolls and you have another bullet point and you scroll. You carousel. Carousel version. Some people just skip those, so you, can, some you people have to <laughs> think about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the person who skips, but I'm I have to design who's... those, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always pros and cons yeah. of each design, so you could, mm -hmm. you could take this screen and really mm -hmm. try out different designs. Um, there's there's people that do video, even mm -hmm. like the background to show yes. this, it's Those are nice. more engaging. Mm -hmm. Just be careful with how many bullet points don't go you crazy. actually show. People don't read too much. Yes. All right, so they would get started and then they would f go right into the flow of shopping. And this is actually the shop tab that I pasted in at the very end to kind of edit this new idea or new design saying we want to have more stuff in here. Mm -hmm. So they pick a color and arrangement. Well, sorry, pick a color. I picked that color. And actually, the first one I never explained is multicolor. So I don't want to pick a color. So oh, if I, I thought wanted, it was a color picker. Oh, no. It's like, if I only allow people to pick from these, maybe uh, I don't want to. Maybe I want to skip. I thought it was bringing up a color picker for some reason. I never asked oh, you, That's though. actually a pretty good idea, too. Because then you can just randomly pick a color. I guess that's, that's how idea. we do most of our Adobe apps is there's always a color picker. That's actually a pretty cool idea because maybe you, you can just do a color picker. Maybe the screen comes up and it's like mm -hmm. the uh, ability to take a photo or a camera and you can like pick a color live or something like that. Right. But yeah, I mean, what if you think about like what if someone doesn't want to pick a color and they want to skip? Mm. And what are the rules between these two? What if this person doesn't know what flower types they want, maybe they don't mind. You have to be able to allow them to exit or skip through something, mm -hmm. like an edge case. Okay, maybe I just want red ro red color flowers mm -hmm. or roses, um, one or the other. So make sure you kind of have designs for, I don't know, maybe we mm -hmm. put skip here. Go back to our library of all the stuff I've made. Um, take the skip button. Um, maybe we put them in right here. Oh, yes. That skip button is gold. Or another way to do that is putting up here, which yeah, is more go standard. Next, like next. Put the action, yeah. put the word next, or skip. Yep. And this one back. There's always, so in iOS, there's always a, a clear way to go be to the next step or back. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the cool thing about mm -hmm. symbols. I can mm -hmm. just update here and 
it gets updated by right clicking, I think, and you say, um, update all symbols. And that oh, updated. Those there. symbols, nice. So you can actually override the text That's just great. on this one, yep. and then just say, I only want to update this and not mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. But these are the, these two screens are the same, so. Yep. So this one, same thing, like I edited that one, but I didn't do update all the symbols. Mm -hmm. So I can click that, update symbols. It's so Done. quick. Um. Yep, so the arrangements, these are the examples. When I click that, it allows me to sort. And then if I click on one of these arrangements that I want, um, I get the detail view of that product which yesterday, this is how we improved with the upgrade icon. Mm -hmm. When you upgrade, you Clients can- Clients always wanna upsell. <laughs> yes. It's a favorite ask, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, upsell the product, um, putting it at a price point that is probably, um, the, the price point aspect also has a lot to do with research and user research, meaning like, who are your customers? What are the right price point for an arrangement that they'll most likely right. to purchase? Mm -hmm. And you also have to think about really like how, how much is this gonna cost? Mm -hmm. Because the personalization aspect yeah. is always more time for the, to the designer to put together rather than something that already exists. So maybe yeah. that's, that's why we have sort of the update mm -hmm. later on saying, okay, why don't we just present some arrangements that were already made from your favorited list. And those are more like uh, arrangements that already are ready to go mm -hmm. and not a custom. Do you ever do your own research? Or do you work with a researcher? Yeah, I've worked with a researcher, but it would be more of a bigger company where they have the budget for a researcher. Um, to do my own research, you would just basically have to write out all the use cases and things that you want to know, and then like present this to someone, mm -hmm. and then like you said yesterday, you just watch them do it without yeah. any instruction. And try not to ask them uh, questions that, that are would, actually like, leading them in. Yeah, influence their my behavior. Yeah, my favorite one is like, what do you think it should do? <laughs> you're like, I don't know. Sometimes right before you give that to them, you say, what do you, so tell me, like, how do you, how do you buy, how do you buy this? How do you mm -hmm. buy flowers? Mm -hmm. Do you like, open up your computer, right. check your email for deals maybe, they mm -hmm. could check their email for flower coupons. What do you do? Do you go to a website you already know? And if they do that before they use your product, mm -hmm. just watch them and mm -hmm. say, well, what, why, do you, why do you go there instead mm -hmm. of go, go here? Mm -hmm. um, so for the portfolio, we have 47 minutes until you submit for our segment. So we get the chance to critique your portfolio. Um, there's a tab and above the chat or next to the chat actually <laughs> where you can submit it but you can also submit it for the rest of the day until 2:30 uh, because there's two more segments after us there's some questions about that so i wanted to make sure that we answer them okay sorry keep going yeah so we're just talking about the mm -hmm. upgrade functionality and you you can upgrade this particular flower into different sizes select that one and then you are being also upsold to, hey, would you like a new vase? And this is a carousel that allows you to um, move the vases back and forth, mm -hmm. and it tells you if it's uh, included with the price or it's an additional. And yesterday we explored a creative way to do this, which is having an AR mode, which we actually tap this button and we display a camera that shows an image of your house, or in this case, a kitchen, places that arrangement in your home, and you can also swipe and see what that looks like mm -hmm. before you add it to bag. And maybe you don't want it. You, know, you can just exit out of here mm -hmm. and add this one, and you will go back to the traditional flow. This is just an alternate example to show to your client if they want to do something more creative. Yeah. And, and, and I learned something new yesterday. You can actually do this in Adobe Dimension. Yes, Adobe Dimension. Um, okay, so yeah, and then this screen is actually the screen that used to be right here, mm -hmm. where in the detail view of the product, um, maybe you, maybe in, in the previous selections, you didn't know what flower to pick from and you only wanted a color combination. So 
maybe presented to you some flowers that you don't know anything about, you wanna know more about it. So here is the product view and you click that flower and it gives you sort of the description of that flower and gives you suggestions on, here are the arrangements that also are part of the flower. Mm -hmm. um, for the first sort of design with the Apple Pay because it was the fastest way to get something working. So they press uh, add to cart and basically they can check out. And after they check out, they received a screen that says we've got your order an image of the flower and the vase they selected and just says it'll be delivered today. And that was it. That's great. So um, one of the feedback we got in <laughs> is, can we make this more explicit? Meaning like, well, what exactly is going on in this screen? Can I see more? Mm -hmm. So for, for that, maybe I just start with, okay, uh, if I wanna see more, maybe I make a screen um, that has a map and say, all right, where, where are my flowers right now? Are they being made? Oh, so you you can actually track it in real time. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Like what's going on? Right. Like show me, show me more about this yep. process. So, okay, so what I would yeah, do Yeah, I love is, knowing when I'm waiting for a package to know where it is. It's like Amazon it's always Prime, in like New Jersey for some reason. Your, it's always somewhere box. in New Jersey. <laughs> It's always in New Jersey. Yeah. Like, don't you wish you could see insight into like what this person is doing? Like, are they actually creating or making, um, packing your stuff? Yeah. It's on its way, mm -hmm. like what's going on? So mm -hmm. there was, a, there were a few really good questions that I don't want to miss. So I'll ask you as we go. Sure. Uh, but there was one about um, how do you get feedback? How long does it take to get feedback from the client? Like, how do you deal with a situation where it's taking too long or um, like it's not really coming on a regular basis? Yeah, um, there's, a, there's many ways to do feedback. Um, I've done feedback in person where you're sitting next to someone, maybe you're presenting it in a group setting. Um, there's different sort of tips and tricks to doing that differently. So when you're in person, it's probably easiest because you can kind of see their face and how they're reacting. So most of the time, I always, always go in with stating the problem, what they're about to see, like set it up, mm -hmm. and don't show the design until you've, everyone's on the same page. Because not sometimes it's not just the person that gave you the project, it's their bosses too, and they, they don't, might not know. They don't know what was being asked right. and what was the scope. So, so be very recap. clear mm -hmm. and recap. All right, well, for example, if I was presenting this in person, I'll say, oh, um, we've created this process and mm -hmm. as you checked out, we had Apple Pay and this was the screen previously that we had. Right. And currently now we wanna create a screen that, this is, the, okay, well, we created this screen and now it's displaying a detailed view of mm -hmm. the order process. And the reason why we think that is because this gives more clarity. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much extra work on the business end because maybe they have a program that tracks the order came in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this designer's on it, so they yep. put they put their status as in progress. It's already in the system. You're just surfacing that to the customer, so then the customer has a better experience. So having this screen is a clear a clear upgrade for the experience for the customer. It's not a really a upgrade for the business and it's a win-win situation for the business. Right. Um, hello to anyone who's new to the chat. It looks like we have a few new people. Tell us where you're from and if you have questions. Uh, there was a question about, was were you talking about user research? I think we were talking about usability research, mm -hmm. which is different. Um, what we were talking about is showing your design to um, users after you've done it. So getting their opinion on if it's easy to use. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it was, it was design. <laughs> You're designing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracting her. I've been trying to do this for three days, but she's reacting really well. 
Um, right. So how? Do, so sorry. Uh, the question was, how do we present designs to clients? About, yes. Oh, the previous question. The previous yes. question. No, how are do you? We, I, was, how I, do you I, get, I don't feel like I finished the question. How <laughs> yes, do you? Right. How do you get uh, clients to give you feedback? Like if, if they don't give how feedback. How long? How long? Because sometimes it might take a long time. And do you right. have a? Okay. You probably have it in a contract. How long it take? Like they need to give you feedback by or no? Um, Honestly, like the scenario I said before, when you see them in person, I mean, but they they can't, can't not give you feedback. Sometimes you can't, right? Because so, maybe a client is not in your time zone, so you have to chase them by email. Yeah. So with have that, you had that, yeah. So if it's that scenario, then what I do is I only send a prototype. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I create so basically create the designs, send the entire prototype, and then. Sorry, I need to back up. <laughs> I, I would send the prototype, but I usually do not send it unless I can get them on the call. Yeah, call is good. You could send the prototype if the client is someone that's very um, already very experienced with design and development, and, and they understand. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on how you f how you work with this person. And typically, a, a client is not experienced with the design. If you're talking about a business person, but if you're talking about working, let's say, with a design manager of this company, and I'm sure they understand what's going on. <laughs> so you could have a small. You could do the write up in the email. Mm -hmm. But keep it short and just bullet point what you're showing, and then let them go through the prototype and right. give them feedback. But I think the feedback is also very important in terms of like how it's given, because when it's when feedback is written on a on an email, it's typically I personally don't like that because it's it's very vague, and it's not a dialogue. Mm, you like so to you be in need person. to be there mm -hmm. needs to be a back and forth. So if a person types like. I think this. I don't know. I think this icon is it doesn't work. You need to understand why. So then, what what would happen is they've given me feedback, and mm -hmm. now I just want instantaneously be able to ask, why doesn't it work? Is it the color? Is it mm -hmm. too childish? Is it cartoony? Maybe this is not representation of the brand. Maybe I would like a picture of the designer instead of my cartoon. Uh, maybe I don't want the designer's face. That's confusing. Maybe that looks like a delivery guy. Maybe it should be an image of my order in this circle. Mm -hmm. So like I would like to have that conversation live and have more of a feedback system back and forth. But how do you get that person to talk to you? I mean, I feel like most of the time people do talk to you and they do not go many days without. And actually, I tend to get very scared. When a lot of days go by, and no one says anything, and typically, it's either they didn't look at it, or right. they really it, it bombed, or they don't like it. Oh, okay. But you still need to chase them. Cool. That was good. And I, I think emailing them back yeah. is important. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if a day gone by, or two, and you feel a little nervous, send an email and say, "Did you get a chance to take a look at this?" Um, does this make any sense? But uh, with writing those emails, it's also uh, you need some tact. Mm -hmm. For example, um, it's not really nice to say, "Tell me what you think." I don't really. You don't want to say that. You want to say, "The the prototype makes sense. Um, we solved it this way." Um, if it does not make sense, let's talk about it in mm -hmm. a call, in a screen share. So that I can walk you through the whole process, and I think typically to be successful in that, walking through them on the screen, like how we're walking through, is probably the best right, way. Right. Sometimes you won't know. So, like an example is that I thought it was a color picker, and it wasn't. Right. Perfect example. And I'm sitting next to you. Yeah, because everyone thinks days. differently. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe they thought something else, and mm -hmm. that is actually a cool feature. So let's just add it in because. Obviously, I can solve that problem by simply putting skip on there and just doing the design live and say, "All right, let me just put it around here right now." Right. Take a look. Um, they see that immediate change, and they'll be like, "Oh, you have sign off." Yep. And that's what you want. You want you ultimately mm -hmm. want sign off. Yep. On all the designs. Cool. So fast track. Do you have any tips on sort of? Um, 
set getting signed off from your team or? Well, I think it's different when you're working in house、um, because the process is not as clean cut. It's a lot more organic, so it depends,、mm-hmm. and also it depends on what product you're working on, where you are in the process. Who needs to see it? But generally, for everything, I would say communication is key.、Um, no matter if it's a client, if it's a creative director. I mean, depending on who you work with, product manager, you just have to communicate with people. And、um, I love getting feedback, even if it's early, too early in the process,、uh, because it's better to know that you're going in the right direction and like everyone's aligned. I think that's key. Communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, just over communicate. Yes, over communicate is better. And、uh, those organizational tools, I love Trello. There's a question of if you have any favorite project. Oh, awesome question. I love Trello personally.、Yeah. We use it all the time. Do do everyone on the team use Trello? For yeah, we do. I mean, the design team we like to、um, keep track of what we're working on.、Mm. Um, it's super helpful for any product. Does、features. everyone have their own Trello board? Um, Or the whole team has a the big team Trello has、board. one. I mean, depends on the team.、Um, mm-hmm. I used to have one just for myself to keep myself in check,、mm-hmm. but I think I haven't been updating it lately. I just、mm-hmm. write lists now. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, oh, I think I made. I made a Trello board for personal stuff because I、oh, it was driving me crazy.、Okay. So yeah, I actually use Asana. For my personal、Asana. stuff,、mm-hmm. I just like it. It's just a list view. Yeah.、Um, I actually like using a. This is super nerdy. I like using a Gantt table,、mm. a TeamGantt.com, where I don't know that one. You can write a list, and the list view can be turned into a calendar view, can be turned into a Gantt chart, which is like the the progress bar、oh, next、nice. to each list,、mm-hmm. like how long it's gonna take、mm-hmm. me. Did it stop here,、mm-hmm. and how long? Is there a way to make the highlight asset on canvas a different color or more highlighted? It's hard to see on a huge canvas. Oh, you mean in order when you click this? Is it a? You're asking of an XT sort yeah. of? Yeah. Oh, so when you click that, can this highlight? No, be more I don't、obvious? think so. Yeah, I think I mean the reason the team kept it this.、Um, Kind of not too obvious is because we want the the work to shine.、Uh, I mean, we're always trying to be on the background. But yes, submit any. I mean, any any feature requests you can send to the team, and、um, they'll they'll look at it and prioritize. This is how they're building. And I think earlier there was a question of, or someone said something about XD not having. A lot of features are having less.、Um, they're releasing every month. There's a new feature every month. So, send your、um, feature requests, and、um, they'll prioritize them. So, they're actively working. There's some awesome features last month in mm-hmm. August, mm-hmm. and you showed some. I learned new stuff yesterday about overlay transitions,、mm-hmm. and. Um, the assets, being able to arrange them. What else is new? Oh,、um, I think、yep. Kelly to answer a question. Maybe th- the reason it's hard to see what's going on, and here I am with another shortcut. Maybe、oh. Command Zero is when you see everything. It's your shortcut stories.、Yeah. <laughs> She's using a shortcut for everything. I do this actually a lot.、Um, I, so、I do Command Zero to like zoom out,、mm-hmm. and Command Zero just sort of puts everything that you have in the file on the screen at、mm-hmm. once. And then what I do is when you have a ton of boards, yeah, it does get a little overwhelming. That's why it's really important to to be very organized and maybe have section titles like what I have here. Like maybe well, this is very general design. Maybe this is actually called onboarding. Which is this flow, and then here from selecting a color to type,、mm-hmm. you actually say, okay, this is the shop, because now we've introduced all these buttons here, all these tab、right. icons, and you could really break out each one of these into its own、right. section to make it more digestible.、Mm-hmm. And what I do is I always zoom out, and then I click this, the one that I know that I want, because it's、mm-hmm. kind of obvious at a zoomed out level.、Yeah. Then I just press Command one or two or three, which just、to、zooms it in. in. 
cool. Um, do you work on a big screen at home? Yes. Just one? One no. big? Two? Actually, this this is the smallest screen, and I almost cannot work on this computer. But I like the portability and the right. small size, and I can still design. Mm -hmm. But if I am at home and I design stuff, it's an iMac with another 27 inch. So I actually yeah. use a huge, two ginormous screens. Yeah, that helps. And I don't have to zoom in and out, and I can link right. stuff a lot mm -hmm. faster. Mm -hmm. But I, but I like this functionality. I actually use this quite a lot. Mm, we have uh, the complete list of shortcut text. Uh, thank you, Tim. I will look at those too, because it looks like I don't have all of them in my head. <laughs> you know what I do? This is super nerdy. I go to that. I print it out, and ah, I tape it on the wall. Nice. And sometimes I just look at them and just to memorize it. Mm -hmm. Don't 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 be crazy That's like me. That's very nerdy. I know, and I print it out for other programs too. Oh, and I try to hire you actually. <laughs> it's, it's psycho. I actually, I actually, there's actually a website that has all the shortcuts. <laughs> that that is why I'm like, oh, I wish like there's some way to make everything the same, so I don't We're forget. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you can always edit your shortcut to whatever right, you want. Right, you can and make I, them yourself. And I just refuse mm -hmm. to edit my own shortcut because yeah. I, if I were to go tell someone else to. Uh, kind of, how, how, how do I do this? Well, I don't want mm -hmm. to say, oh, I just use my own shortcut. Yeah. I don't know how to do it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so for anyone who's new, um, we have 20 minutes until we start looking at portfolios. So awesome. submit your portfolio. Uh, this is for our segment. You can also submit your portfolio later on uh, to be looked at um, the other two segments. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Get feedback. Cool. Oh, and you have a nice wireframe for checkout. Yeah, so I'm basically fixing the two comments we have mm -hmm. now, which is the order. Mm -hmm. um, the order here it could be more clear. Here I have a map. <laughs> Someone's making flowers in the ocean. Um, let me in the East River. Oh no, you don't want to <laughs> do that. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Well, obviously, you can double click the mask and you can drag down right. where you want it. And then, oh, well, actually, lost the map. Uh, yeah, so you can. I just took a screenshot in New York. This is where I live. <laughs> and just like put the map on there from Google. Um, so, what I have now is I actually have a timestamp for the order received. And I was hoping that, you know, this, this icon, these are the dot will grids. be moving. Yes. Nice. So the Pink dot will grid. be moving. The dot moves, travels down. Mm, to tell you where it is. Putting pedal to the metal. I like that. <laughs> and then out for delivery, and mm -hmm. someone's out there, and it's getting delivered. So yeah, so after I kind of designed that, I realized there's not enough space, because I put the tab in, so I probably just need to make this your use of emoji is really cute too. I think it really goes with the <laughs> millennial customer theme. I'm definitely not allowed to use emojis at work. So <laughs> I took this opportunity to just go Since insane. Since it's a fake project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally went and I was like, I'm gonna type up all the flower emojis I find I on the keyboard. This. And I was like, all right, these are so the- So might as well have fun. If this you're creating my... a fake, fake project, might as well have fun. Yes. <laughs> That's the best part of a fake project. You can totally- You, you know, can do anything. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I'm gonna fix up the payment system with the checkout. Mm -hmm. So I just need a top level. And it's nice that you had a wireframe, so you're just basically coloring your water wireframe instead of like typing Oops. up. Oh, we talked about this yesterday. Like, if you're typing in front of an audience, I'm always spelling things wrong. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if you think about this, you mm -hmm. lay it out anyway this way. You just start typing out, like, what could be there on the screen as right. my wireframe. You could draw it on a piece of paper. You can just start typing in here if you want. Um, and then just go in and apply the styles. Because you have everything already in your assets panel. Mm -hmm. It's making it much easier to color. 
Yep, she's so fast. I'm amazed. <laughs> it's also nice to be sitting and watching someone. <laughs> I actually really enjoy watching someone design. Me too. too. I just me too. I'm having a make blast. Make them feel nervous. <laughs> I also kind of like to design in front of people. So sometimes in a meeting, I'll just be designing. They're talking. I'm like, is this what we're talking about? Oh yeah, I know. I do that too. It's actually really great because, you know, it, sometimes people You're, are you saying could be different saving, things. I mean, you could be saving time, and I think when you. When you see something on paper, it's different. I mean, people have a real reaction. Otherwise, it's ideas and mm -hmm. um, they might not be on the same page. Yeah, it's actually important to get everyone on the same page and sometimes just doing a quick mock-up mm -hmm. helps a lot. Yep. So. Yeah, I think we're having a different theme every day. Yesterday we had be brave, today is communicate. Yeah. Oh, we, should do, theme every day. we should do a funny um, meme using your website. <laughs> what are you, cat? <laughs> Good cat's cat. Yeah, cat's cat. You should have brought a okay. picture of your cat and we can put it between us. <laughs> Actually, have, Funny Do you is, have one? Uh, actually, funny thing is, people ask me that, and I was like, "No, that's not that's not professional. No one wants to see your cat <laughs> on the screen." I was like, "Are you gonna design an app for your cat?" I'm like, "No, I don't want to be a cat lady. Like, my project <laughs> is gonna be about my cat. Like, what about what about my cat?" <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I I really like this shortcut too, which is you when you're ready to make a you know, a symbol, mm -hmm. you name it correctly, like maybe it's button, place order, and then I do a command K. <gasps> and it becomes a symbol, command yeah, K, becomes, make a symbol. And then <gasps> it goes on the back down of the list, and usually I you just try to, it. I try to like make it organized, put mm. like buttons You're all together. You're very organized. But it's not, it's not organized in any way in here, but. I also like how you can click this button and. Do you like the list view? Do you like the list view or the grid view? I, I like the list view for the character styles and the colors because mm -hmm. they're all just on the screen. But this, I prefer this view because I can't see it mm -hmm. unless you name it really well and mm. correct. And obviously, you can see which ones are pretty bad. Right. These are all duplicates that you just need to clean up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can actually rearrange it. You can just drop it in. That's great. Do you actually use this functionality here where search? Do you do like buttons? Um, you can do it if you actually name it correctly. You can actually. You can this look is for very them. useful. This is awesome. So yep. you do, yep. which I don't have. Maybe it's buttons is the best example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and help you design faster yep. with the stuff. Let's it's see. super handy. Yeah, especially when you work on a larger team, I think it's really important to stay organized and keep your assets together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everyone's using the same buttons and the same grays <laughs> or blues. How do you guys go about with the decisions about grays? We have That's a, we a, have a style topic. guide. <laughs> yes, we have so a team good. that is uh, in charge of the style guide. The so we don't. I, I mean, everyone has an opinion, but it doesn't matter. We go with what they tell us. <laughs> That's so funny what developers or designers actually care about on yep. a day to day basis. Yep. It's like the level of grace. Like, I was expecting someone to ask me that question for this thing. There's so many angles you can talk about. Like, oh, it's, it's very light, this is very dark, maybe you shouldn't mm -hmm. have anything in the middle, maybe the you divider line need the is middle. this, yeah, maybe you need it's that, that one. Mm -hmm. um, just but probably more than that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, we also have light and dark themes, as you know, like Photoshop you can have in the light or dark theme. Oh, so right. our, um, our designers who are working on the style guide have to make sure that everything works on every theme. Awesome. And on any platform. And How in any context. How do you feel context. about the, um, the dark theme talk or idea of having dark UI or dark? Is this a chat question? Do you guys like the dark? I guess you um, XD only has the light right now. Um, I use my Photoshop, I mean, my Photoshop's always in the dark theme, and I think when I go to someone's desk and they're using the light theme, I'm like, what are you using? Is this Photoshop? 
<laughs> Actually, the Photoshop has the, you have the ability to choose how, how dark yes. and how gray. Yeah. I always like the the one that used to mm -hmm. be. I don't know, maybe it's the mm -hmm. second from the darkest, mm -hmm. but you can actually get even darker. Yeah. For UI, I find this really nice because you can actually see. Um, I mean, it's easier when you're creating images. I darkest the dark, theme Darkest. Available. I think dark theme is going to mm -hmm. be the next thing because, mm -hmm. at least for Apple, it is definitely the next thing. I'm expecting a dark theme to come you on the Mac. You think so? Yeah, they already announced that for the Mac. Oh, cool. The next iOS 12 is going to be dark, you know, have a dark theme. And the way they were going to do it is to have opacity. So they have the dark overlay, and then when they flip over to the light, it's just flipping the, the black to the white, and it mm. has the same opacity. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. But you know sometimes when people say it's dark theme, they're actually using dark blue and not black or gray. Really? It's like, it's like indigo, in, yeah. indigo theme. Yeah. Oh, ours is gray. It's real it's gray. gray. Yeah. Oh, it's black. Okay. Yeah, it's the real gray. <laughs> <laughs> yes, XD does not have a dark mode yet. But I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's coming at some point. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Don't tell the team. I didn't say that. <laughs> like, Rumiana, why did you promise all these new features to be added? Everything's possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so the up-to-date with iOS, how do you keep up-to-date with iOS trends and um, new features? We actually watch every single video. Do you watch? You watch all the presentations. Yeah, yes. we try to. Yeah, and those are all free. Um, you can you can watch them download. Online. Yeah, you can watch them online, or you you can mm -hmm. get the WWDC app from the App Store, and they have all the videos from all these years, and you can watch them. Developer mm -hmm. videos, de design videos, and they kind of teach you or tell you what's coming down. I think they're actually having a new um, announcement on the 12th yep. of December, of September. December. Yes, they have one in the fall. <laughs> that would be interesting. Like next week, actually, yep. September. Yep. So they'll be announcing new products, and whenever they announce new products, they have screenshots, they have talks about what's going to be around, and that's sort of when you look at that, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, that's the new trend. Maybe. Yep. And if anyone's interested in the Adobe side, mm -hmm. we actually have our annual conference, uh, Adobe Max. It's coming up soon in October. It's going to be in LA. I don't know if it's sold out yet, but it's really fun. That's when we announce new features, new products. Um, but our conference is also about creativity, so there's always like really cool inspirational speakers, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just really fun. That actually you, sounds have you really been? fun. No, I really want to go. It's really fun. <laughs> Going to conferences and like just learning about what we're doing or what the company's doing, it's amazing. You can ha yep. you have access to the people right there. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can. Act oh, actually, you can save four hundred dollars. Oh, cool! On it, it's not sold out. <laughs> Yay! Yes, I'm going. Find me there. <laughs> it's gonna be really fun. Yeah, and I think Google also has really good documentation on their new features. As I mean, as well as any other uh, big company. And so does Microsoft for their operating system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as you're interested, you can find anything. Oh, and the cool thing about Max is that there's always like, um, my favorite part about Adobe Max is the last day they have, um, I think about 10 engineers who go on stage and they're showing all these like cool features. Oh, that man. Some, many times they don't have any UI. They're just like so, showing all these capabilities that they've been working on oh, in the awesome. labs. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and those are available online as well. So you can find them like any kind of crazy things like removing people from background when taking photos, <laughs> like painting with oil color and like Printing it in three dimensional in a three D printer. Um, I'm always so amazed at the advancements of all these pro like programs from Adobe because, you know, back in the day, you would have to just use the pen tool and just cut someone out. 
Oh yes. And now it's like They're magic. They're smart. You can, it's so smart. It's a dirty and you magic. can just edit the edges a little bit. <laughs> yeah. To mask something yeah. and it's There's much easier than mm -hmm. ever to design. I feel like than mm -hmm. um, from when I started in Dark Ages. Oh yes, <laughs> it's much easier. Yeah, I think I had a hard time figuring out how the pen tool works in Photoshop when I was <laughs> in school because I had to make a poster. I was like, how do I cut this out? That that was actually like it was the really number hard. one thing to learn is like how to make a curve mm -hmm. in a nice way. How to <laughs> yeah. How to like cut someone? Like, how to cut your hair? Which would like, oh, hair is like, really mask hard. Their hair. Oh, heart. That was like definitely. channels. <laughs> you gotta use channels for that. You're like, what? How do I use that? Yes. <laughs> uh, new features for XD. Every month they have one. I don't know what around one time of the month, but you can find it on the Adobe website. There's always new features. The new ones came out in uh, the end of August. Yep, every month. And you get it through your uh, Creative Cloud app on the desktop. There's always, I don't know, every time I open it, there's like, new update. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, always keep your f um, programs updated. Yeah. I just, it just takes it helps. a second. It helps. Yeah, when you have the subscription, it's it's really fantastic. <clears throat> I always read the, the change logs before I update. That's a very nerdy thing to do. Yeah, I do that on my phone too. Every I time do too. An, every time an app updates, I'm like, what did they change? I read the whole thing. Yes. And then I'm like, all right, I'll update. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, fun question. Oh my God. From the version? audience. Thank you, Crystal. What version, what version of, of Adobe? Adobe did you start designing in? <laughs> this is a question for everyone. Let's see who's, we can guess their age by answering that question. I'm also a Photoshop 7. I gotta look it up, sorry. <laughs> what does it look like? What does Photoshop 7 look like? I use Photoshop 7. What On a Windows machine. What does Photoshop 6 look like, though? Actually, at Mac, they had uh, a really awesome, like in the, in the, there's a big area where you can go and try out new products, but they had a room, I think it was last year or the year before, where they had a theme from each year that there was Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Do they actually install it on the computer for you to I play think so. around? I think there was one from the very first version. Because Photoshop's been around for so long, right? It's crazy. Photoshop 7, CS4, 7. You are really looking it up. I 19, love this. 1998 was Photoshop 5. When did you start using Photoshop? I don't know. I, I feel like I was messing around with it when I was a little kid. I yep. didn't know how to use it, but I, I had it. Mm -hmm. And I turned on my computer and I just used the paintbrush and I messed around with mm -hmm. it, but I wasn't mm -hmm. really doing mm -hmm. any design work. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's, I've probably used Photoshop from, maybe it's Photoshop 5, yep. even. Yeah, I mean, when I look at it, it's hilarious because, you know, just the way it looked before, the pixelation of it, it gives right. me some, so much nostalgia, like, Yeah, we talked cute. about trends yesterday, uh, and the day before, actually. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a, a common theme to talk about UI trends. Mm -hmm. um, we found out there were a lot of people, I mean, there were people questioning about the flat and if you like drop shadow design. Yes, right. you're using flat some drop shadow or not flat. <laughs> having fun. <laughs> right. I think I figured out how to make gradients on buttons and then flat design came in. It was like, it was flat everything. Flat, flat everything. everything. Damn, why did I learn all this? <laughs> That's actually, it's funny because people always tend to get used to a version and mm -hmm. they love it and then all of a sudden it's not mm -hmm. in anymore and you're mm -hmm. like what why mm -hmm. you hate on it everyone hates on change mm -hmm. then they like it and then they totally mm -hmm. go back yeah we have 10 minutes to submit your portfolio so we can give you feedback i'm trying to really distract you today so you are not designing <laughs> 
I actually had some wireframes designed um, for an extra thing that I could share. Yeah, that would um, be nice. So one of the ideas was, hey, I, you know, I, I've liked, or when I ID'd my plant, I like this one. Press what was like. this one? This is, this is from the dis, um, discovery page where mm -hmm. we said, hey, let's ID this flower. So we tap this icon, the camera comes up, and then uh, it does machine learning somehow. Then it gives you an mm -hmm. option of all the possible flowers that it could be. And then you kind of press, you know, check mark for saying, yeah, that's the one I like, uh, that's the right one. Um, or you, you actually press a heart button, or I don't have that now, but I'll add it in. But you press this, and then basically you are creating a favorites page. Of all your favorite flowers of and all the favorite stuff you've colors. added in the whole app. Oh, that's nice. It's like an assets panel for flowers. Yes. Assets panel. So <laughs> I guess the feedback would be, well, what is this for? Mm -hmm. Why do I care about a favorite screen? Like, what do I do with it? Um, well, there's no use case. Mm -hmm. Well, the use case now is saying, well, what if I wanted to do a subscription model for the millennials? What if uh, I need to order flowers? I want my flowers delivered every day, and I want mm -hmm. to have it delivered. Maybe not every day, every week or every month in a subscription basis. And instead of just getting random flowers that is being picked, um, why can't I have it be from my favorites list so that you know I'm always sure it's gonna, always gonna be something I like. Mm -hmm. And so I can always just have all one color. Maybe I want all purple flowers to be delivered to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what type. Every month I get purple flowers. Or I only like roses, so That's every really, month yeah. give me roses. Um, or maybe there's an idea about the, uh, the amount of roses. Maybe I can have like a a sliding bar that says, okay, I only I want 50% of the arrangement to be roses. And, and then everything, everything else, surprise else me. I don't care. Surprise it's like me. a CSA for flowers. <laughs> I like that. So then um, I even thought about what if mm -hmm. you don't care about any of that? You don't know the color, you don't know the type. So what are some other creative ways we can actually go about um, enticing the customer to buy right. more? So I came up with another idea, which is Let's take a quiz. So make it yours. Uh, share your style, mood, and create a more personalized experience to either inspire you or maybe you can share your flower likes and dislikes with somebody. Maybe you can share it to Pinterest. Maybe you can send it to someone as a hint. Right. Um, so I started this little small quiz or questionnaire is like, okay, first tell us what's your name. So at least mm -hmm. when you type in your name here, maybe the app can reflect that when you open up the app. What colors you don't like. So maybe you don't like choosing the colors from, from shopping. Maybe this is for me and this is not a gift for someone. Mm -hmm. What are the colors I don't want? And what are the price points that I typically want to purchase? Is it cheap, medium, or expensive? Then. The next quiz is, um, what's your style? Maybe you don't have a specific request for the color and um, variety. Maybe mm -hmm. we can generate some stuff for you. Mm -hmm. So I pick these items like elegant, bubbly, modern, and putting a more of a stylized keyword to the attribute, it helps a person kind of visualize that. So maybe the way that they like to be dressed or their apartment is more of a modern aesthetic. Maybe they would like a more modern type arrangement. Mm -hmm. And in terms of flower arrangements, there are styling. So meaning like, I would like a modern arrangement means I don't want leaves at all. I just want the flower with the stem. Maybe they want something more bohemian. So that means very wild and um, broad and have tons of leaves. Um, so how clean is this bouquet? Is it like we, we take out a lot of the leaves? Do we um, open up the petals that are small mm -hmm. things? So wrapping around and just thinking at a high level, um, how do I kind of make this more personable? And right. put something, uh, think of another idea to kind of help people guide through mm -hmm. the attributes. So the other one is, well, um, in our study, it shows that uh, flowers have a high impact on emotional and mood. 
So, what if you say, what mood are you trying to convey with this arrangement? Right. Nurturing it, mood, mm -hmm. romantic mood, like, what is it, what is it, it's really getting at what is it for. Right. So, what if I just put that as my questionnaire? It's not requirement, it's not an onboarding process, it's probably just an extra item on the discovery page so that um, I can now populate some ideas for you below and mm -hmm. not having to really rely on liking or so it's hearting more personalized something. and the app learns about you as you keep using it right mm -hmm. like yeah. everything else out there so to write this <laughs> ideal out I, I made some yep. information here which oh, is I like that. all right so if you're picking your elegant mm -hmm. classic and your modern what does that mean? Maybe you can say, mm -hmm. I map it to these specific things. So maybe mm -hmm. the elegant and classic are more of a floral scent. So there are mimosas, irises, mm -hmm. and peonies. Bubbly is more of a sugary idea, so maybe it's more of a sweet scent, lily of the valley. Mm -hmm. Modern bold is more jasmine, so mm -hmm. the styling is actually selecting the flower name and flower variety. That's cool. And the mood is actually showing the colors. Oh, that's nice because mood is connected to color. Kelly right. had a great idea about even though it's a fake company, it's making friends on the app, so bringing in social. Yeah, so we said, okay, well, what if we set this up? Can we share it? Mm -hmm. um, share these ideas and have people actually log into the app and play around instead of forcing kind of the user to always be shopping and sending them through the shopping process. Maybe that's not what they want to do mm -hmm. right now. Maybe you've done their shopping mm -hmm. on all, all week mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're kind of just discovering new things and mm -hmm. it's kind of like you're appealing to more of a um, millennial type preference which is right. I don't know what I want. I just know I like this price point. I want to shop based on what I see. Mm -hmm. So if I want to shop based on what I see, well tell us a little bit about maybe your style and mood which is equivalent to the color and variety, and then show me pictures. And I, I'll just shop from the pictures. I love this idea of getting the subscription and just getting flowers delivered to you every month. <laughs> yeah. It'd be so nice. I mean, it's I'm really nice, I'm but people don't subscribe because I know. the effort of that is just too high. It's like, right. well, I, every month I have to go in and select something. Yes. What if I don't care? What if I just like mm -hmm. the pink uh, gradients right. just every week just send me some stuff mm -hmm. Definitely or say cool surprise idea. me and <laughs> treat yourself yes exactly there's only two and a half minutes left to submit your portfolio uh, hurry up <laughs> we're gonna be looking at portfolios soon I think that's one of my favorite parts cool oh and you're like hurry I gotta design this <laughs> yes Elegant, bubbly. Actually, I didn't really have you pictures nice. for those. I was um, like, well, well, that's gonna be a little bit of time for me to figure out what um, what images are actually for elegant, what actually mm -hmm. pictures for for being bubbly. Um, maybe. Um, so you actually, yeah, you set up everything and then you added images after in the folders to drag them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you start spending time on actually coloring this in before, you'll never be done. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just too much. It's it, there's you need to do a lot more research. Oh, you need to go pretty. online, kind mm -hmm. of look at some of the images you like and yep. what that means. And that's really about visual editing and yep and kind of reiterating. It looks like you got a lot. I mean, you did a lot of research for this, which is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We have one minute Kay. left for your portfolio. Submit. I like how fast you can do this if you have the images in there. I know, it's so much like... faster. Yeah. In, I mean, when I used to design UI in Photoshop, which I'm sure you have too, before there was... It would take forever. It would take forever because you have to make a mask. You have to make a <laughs> clipping mask of right, a square right. and then throw the image on top, clip it, put everything in the, the right folder, name your folder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now it's so easy. Yeah, that's why it's definitely better to use XD. And yes, absolutely. Use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. You can iterate super quickly. 
And prototype, I mean, that's huge. Like show clients, teams, how it would work or use it for actual user testing. Um, yeah. So I'm going around and just fixing up the screens and reordering them as we've added them from the bottom. So this is like... There's four happening. seconds left. Three seconds. Two, one, <laughs> done. Okay, you can submit your portfolio again later as well. So keep submitting. Uh, we will look at some portfolios in a second. Uh, we're going to quickly go into space. We're back. Rumiana, you're a bobber. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta look at Are those you surprised at me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was so surprised. It's funny because I can hear my echo in this. I know, I can hear, only hear myself. <laughs> when I knew I was gonna be here this week, I was super excited. I couldn't wait for this moment when we're wearing space outfits. <gasps> so we're gonna look at some portfolios. I think I'm going to take mine off because I can't hear myself. <laughs> and we're going to stay focused because we got to give feedback. This was fun. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I wanted to wear that on the first day, but there was no reason uh, to. <laughs> so we have two portfolios lined up. We have George Samuel from Egypt. Um, we're going to look at, their, at, at his portfolio on Behance. It looks like there is a bunch of projects. Mm, cool. cool. So what I usually, I mean, I don't know how you look at Behance, uh, but I usually like to look at the chat, like a brief about me t before I even get started. Mm -hmm. Is this what you do? I would go to the about page before I look at a portfolio. Oh yeah, I, I um, I'm just, I actually just look at it up and down. I did okay. exactly Let's do what and down. you would do. I'm controlling, but mm -hmm. you tell me what to do. Yeah, I definitely just look up and down. Yep. Look at the thumbnails mm -hmm. really quick. And I, yeah, I, I do exactly what you say. I go to the About Me section. I yep. kind of expand down a little if they have a lot of yep. So stuff. it looks like he's a UI UX designer and UI developer. So all in one. Mm -hmm. And focusing on websites and mobile web, which, I mean, you can see that just from looking here. There's some web projects. There's some apps. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I like to have, I mean, it's nice that there's a full work experience. That's definitely fantastic to have. Um, connections to all the social networks, mm -hmm. focus areas. Mm -hmm. I would say that's a good, a good way to structure your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And there's projects, collections. Obviously, it's very active on the Behance. Good job. Should we dive into yeah. Or maybe we should talk about how it looks just from before you even go in, mm -hmm. like the title pages. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Can you see from Can there? Can you make it a little bit bigger uh, on your screen? Okay, yes. Oh, great. Yes. Is this big enough? Yeah. Or no, too big. Yeah. Okay, good. good. Um, can I see what the about again? So yes. I can see what we're doing. Oh, yeah, because you weren't able to read. <laughs> I have my screen. I have my secret screen. <laughs> Um, yeah, so UI, UX designer and developer mm -hmm. focused on creating websites and mobile user experience and interfaces. Love what I do. I'm always looking for new ways to challenge myself in a creative field. Um, this website is showcasing my favorite designs. Cool. Nice. I think the about me um, section is actually really important. Yes. Um, it's, it gives me a short description of what you're about to show me and what to expect and mm -hmm. I think a lot of people when they write their about me is always about um, you know just general information so I like how there's a little bit of personality you're telling me you know what you like to do and uh, what, what kind of style that you, you would prefer to design in mm -hmm. so that's the very good about section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah I typically just look at the pictures because they're available the thumbnails um, event app landing page. Yes. Just scrolling through. 
um, yeah, so nice variety of different projects. So how do you go about clicking on one of them? I just click on whichever one that catches yeah. my eye, yeah. usually the first two rows. Yeah, I always look at the, I mean, usually people have their latest work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, at least I do. Mm -hmm. I think one one piece of advice from me would be, I think the some of the top um, thumbnails are a little busy, like this one is a little busy, but some of the earlier ones are a lot cleaner. Like this is super clean and uh, for a thumbnail, I would say stay on the clean side. Don't have too much going on uh, and like keep your descriptions really short, kind of mm -hmm. how you're doing it here. And one, um, one thing, good job on having multiple owners. Always give credit. Mm -hmm. um, yes, tag your team um, because I think that that sh separates you kind of from, from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Loving the use of the falls with. Mm -hmm. um, let's go even really bigger. Really great experience. Oh, wait. Should we? Yeah, let's yeah, go bigger. Like that, let's yeah. go bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I like this image a lot. I mean, it's it's nice use of typography mm -hmm. and image. Wait, we can go. I have to go next. Oh, maybe I'll just go and scroll because this is how you're supposed to look at it. So this is a app event app landing page. Mm -hmm. Event slider, mm -hmm. about page. Yep. I'm just taking a look. Pricing. So this is the full page. Yeah, I like kind of how the topics were introduced. Everything looked super nice and dynamic. Obviously, image. Great use of image and text, mm -hmm. um, and like innovative typography, I would say. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I think um, one thing that I would imp uh, change is I like the use of the introduction, mm -hmm. coloring, sort of elements and components but I wish I could just see the project sooner. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I feel like you, when you scroll to right here, yep. the full design, I kind of want to see the full design faster. way faster. Yep. So I want to see the work done mm -hmm. and then show me yep. the sort of components that you've designed. Yep. Because I feel like the, when you sh showcase the component in multiple iterations and, and, and following them, you mm -hmm. tend to just look at it and mm -hmm. say, all right, well, so what does this mean? Yep. Um, I would condense the number of components down to only one or two because um, I can see the components when I see the full design. Right. And like this is a really nice way to start. You probably don't need to go for each one. I mean, mm -hmm. this is nice how the O is going through. But yeah, yeah, I like I the graphic. I definitely. But I would just show the, the screen mm -hmm. with the website first yeah. and just reorder it. Um, I'm a big fan, unlike a lot of people on my team, mm -hmm. of writing words <laughs> um, because okay. it's nice to know what this is about, but mm -hmm. it also would help to understand um, what the objective of this is. And mm -hmm. I would say maybe like that will go into the description of the project. Mm -hmm. Maybe not here because you have really nice images, but maybe be a little more descriptive. Mm -hmm. um, Behance is difficult because you want to shine, you, you want to have your images shine, but there's also needs to be a little bit of copy to, to explain what this is. Mm -hmm. um, or like if you have your personal URL, that's when I go crazy with the copy. <laughs> I try to. I've been scaling it down. Uh, should we look at another project? Sure. Do you have another? Which one should we look at? Do you want to look at the second one? Sure. Okay. This one's also multiple owners. Cool. Oh, there's, there's an animation. On there. Nice. So this is a clinic management system. Mm -hmm. Oh, and for the devices, I would say it's really difficult to comp with the real devices because Apple changes them so quickly. <laughs> I've been using, like, I've been drawing my own. Uh, you like, draw them in vector. Yeah, I'm just drawing vectors and like don't even don't even put the button because. 
um, they change. I had to redo all of them recently. It's annoying. This is a nice animation. Yeah, I like the animation mm -hmm. and the movement. Mm -hmm. I love this type of <laughs> real fat face. Yeah. So there's color, there's grids, mm -hmm. uh, landing. Okay, so now we get to the website. I would say the same thing, probably like get to this quicker. You can also- What I really like is that the screenshot of the website is mm -hmm. like full screen yes. and not a size down. So mm -hmm. I can actually read yes. what the website is really saying yep. instead of it being always being really small and you kind of just mm -hmm. see the images across. Mm -hmm. um, um, I have a thing for typography. Sorry, I gotta say this. <laughs> it's really hard to read a paragraph this this is this wide. Um, so I would try to break this into sections. I know it's probably just placement copy because it looks like there's lorem ipsum, but try to like make paragraphs because people want to be able to read. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the you know type sizing as well. Um, making sure the line length so that it's not super long, mm -hmm. have it in a, in a nicer uh, breathing room between all yeah. the text. Because all mm -hmm. the title, I mean, all the title copy has been like the right size and like nice, big and bold. Yeah. For the text, I would say, um, try to con figure out how to cut the lines and have mm -hmm. nice letting, the space mm -hmm. between the lines, um, so it's legible. Oh, there's more animations. Oh, there's an app too. So this was the website, now there's the app. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about um, creating one project for only one device? So meaning that if mm. I have this sort of project to showcase, I typically would just have the website be its own page and then the next project I would have the same name but then I'll say mobile, I'll right. say iOS and the next one I'll have Android and it does break it up but right. I'm able to just dive deeper into mm -hmm. What I've done differently through the mm -hmm. whole thing. I know the the concept is to show that we've done a huge project, mm -hmm. and right. it also has this and this and this. So maybe you could do that for the web version, where you explain in in, in a very general form. Like here, just as one screenshot of the iOS. Here's one screenshot mm -hmm. of Android. Here's a website. But then this project is really focusing on the website, I like and then that. you have another project. Right. And you can always link to it. So you can create a link in the content area and it clicks to your, another one of your Behance projects mm -hmm. and let people really like look at each one more in detail. That's a good idea because people might not scroll to the app and the app looked really nice. So breaking it would be a good idea. Um, yep. This is really awesome work. Good job. Yeah, good um, job. Keep going, George. Uh, so we're going to look at the next one because we are kind of getting to the end of our uh, section. So we have Milen Dravey. Um, he must be from Bulgaria. He is. I'm also Bulgarian. Is that why you said it in such a nice, yes. fancy way? I'm like, don't know. I me. said hi, I'm Bulgarian. <laughs> um, um, so it looks like we have a little bit of description. Web designer, mm -hmm. interested in UX and UI. Um, Conceptual graphic. In single pixels. Mm -hmm. Experience in planning out tasks and managing priorities. Liking the write-up for about me. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's more. Just okay. a couple. Yep. And awesome. So you work at a dance dance size dance studio. No, I don't know what it is. Uh, but yeah, there's nice that you have the work experience and quotes. Cool. Can you read that? Yeah, I can read it. Wow, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, okay. that's very nice. And there's also a link to what dance size is, but we won't look at it now because we want to focus on the Behance. And mm -hmm. um, looks like there's a few different projects. I think it's um, the, the, the thumbnails are actually working nicely. I, I'm personally more drawn to the simple ones. Mm -hmm. Another thing I want to say is there are a lot of projects on mm -hmm. this and I would suggest to kind of curate down the number of projects you are showing. It's really about, um, there's just a little bit too too many projects to yep. go through. 
So what you could do, you could say, well, if we've made like a print design or something, right? Maybe just have one print design and have all of your images in that one. That's project. a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I say print because it's probably um, a lot easier to just put the image of the final product in there yeah. and then go to the next project, next one. Mm -hmm. But really, it, well, a part of um, design is also curating your work. Right, because so. we all have tons of projects. It's better to show less, actually, and um, to see, I mean, depending on where you're going, because if you've been doing brand, you've done print, you're doing UI, UX, like which one of these you want to do? If you want to do all of them, yes, break them into sections, but probably have at the top the one that you actually want to get hired to do or you're doing right now, mm -hmm. or you want to be doing in the future. So right. and maybe sometimes mm -hmm. you can also put, you know, the ones that people react to the most mm -hmm. in the front. Mm -hmm. So maybe people are really interested in one of your projects and write a lot of comments or they have a lot of views. Maybe you put that one first yep. and try um, to just make about 10 projects mm -hmm. because tech typically like we're looking at it. We only see the top two rows. I probably won't scroll that far. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I don't think anyone I mean, people do scroll. <laughs> let's let's not really go. just capture yes. attention capture. and try to. Mm -hmm. w when you look at it once, you're like, okay, maybe yep. this first one really yep. is really is really it. Mm -hmm. So yep. the first project. So this is Dance Size um, app UI in UX concept. Mm -hmm. um, I guess by having the word concept, it means it's not alive, uh, which I like that you're actually telling people that it's a concept. Mm -hmm. um, Really liking the hierarchy of the font sizing to the images, mm -hmm. and um, they're all extremely clear, readable at the right size. Mm -hmm. Good use of you know the HIG, I think. Um, yep. Everything's looking great. So there's some animations here. I would focus maybe. I I think there's a lot of. Um, I would focus, maybe show something like this and uh, where you have the animation, but try to keep the pages maybe more organized in some sort of grid um, where they're not side by side so it's clear. Sometimes it helps when you, the way you had, cat, the way you had your screens organized one side by side, it was really clear what's next. Or if you have the same screen, you don't really need to show every single um, person's mm -hmm. profile, right? Yeah, I like the size of these because mm -hmm. it really allows you to look at it in a, I, I can tell that this is done carefully, pixel mm -hmm. perfection. Mm -hmm. um, just boil down probably all of the screens and just pick the key screens that yep. you want people to see. So maybe it's just really three screens. It's Maybe it's the um, product description page for this, which mm -hmm. is basically the person that you are taking the dance class with, that's mm -hmm. one screen. Uh, maybe the list of people that you could take from, maybe that's another screen, mm -hmm. so that you have some variety in terms of the layout. Yep. Um, if the layout is pretty much the same, um, really question like why do you want to show that screen maybe it's not maybe it's an interaction mm -hmm. uh, which this actually shows all of the screens for that's you that's really nice yeah and i like that i, I like there's definitely interactions but i don't mm -hmm. think it's you don't have to show every single screen just the ones that you really like so yeah um, yeah that's great um we only have a couple more minutes let's look at another one uh so it looks like AR, my favorite AR, and it's in bulgarian i can read Does it, it say Put your furniture in your We're house. We're going to show you something you're going to fall in love with. It's your new home. So it's the same what we kind of talked about yesterday. So it goes along with our theme of AR. And this is what is AR. Mm -hmm. It's nice that I can translate for you, right? Awesome. Yeah. I mean, great design again with... Um, I'm liking how you use the grid for the icon. Mm -hmm. That makes me really happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like the way this is broken into one, two. Like, what are the steps? Um, three, four. We really like the icon usage. Mm -hmm. Very simple. It's very clean. Clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> is this uh, from New York Times? <laughs> cool. What about uh, augmented reality? It's kind of nice to have little quotes. Uh, typography, color, mm -hmm. icons. This is nice that they're at the end, actually. Um, some people might not scroll the way. 
and this is all. Um, so it's a live app then? It, it looks like it is. Uh, it looks like there's is there a link to a picture of the app store with that or? Oh, uh, I don't. Right here. I guess maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it is. Yeah, if it's a live app, it's always helpful to have a link to the App Store so you can get people to actually download it and look at it. Even if you worked on it like three versions ago, mm -hmm. I think it's always good because you can see how many star ratings it has. Like, it's it's always and a put good some, idea. You know, if it's in the App Store, put some statistics. Yeah. You know, say, yes. here are our downloads, um, how many people mm -hmm. have tried it all, here are mm -hmm. all the engagement statistics, mm -hmm. and that really helps um, mm -hmm. solidify the project. Yeah. This is great work. Um, yeah, I would say good job to both. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we are almost at the end. We have five minutes left together. Oh, no. No. How did it go so fast? <laughs> Three days. I thought it would be, we have nothing really to talk quick. about. And we have <laughs> so much to talk about. Thank you to everyone in the chat. Uh, it's been fantastic to have all these questions. Um, and yeah, thank to you learn all for more tuning about in. You, I've learned you? so much. I've about learned everyone. so much. Do you have any final tips on portfolio presentation? Because we had some questions earlier. Um, tips? Uh, just put it out there and put it out there. Don't be afraid to show mm -hmm. your work. Be brave. Try new things. Um, you can always improve your portfolio. It is not something you do once and then you're done. It's a constant yes. iteration, curation of your work. Maybe, you know, last year you wanted to do print work and this year you didn't. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that your work is not great. It just means that if you need to tailor your portfolio to the job that you're looking for yes. or the work that you want to get. So if you're interested in, in a uh, industry, maybe it's fashion or something, you know, put fashion mm -hmm examples in your portfolios to show you want that, you want to do that. Yeah, definitely show where you want to be going, not where you've been. And yes, portfolios are never done. And uh, it's always the biggest struggle, I think, as a designer is to be updating your portfolio. Even though I've been at the same job for four and a half years now, I'm always updating my portfolio. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's actually great. It's, because it's better tip is to when you're finished with your project, you should yes, probably write put it, it out there. <laughs> and also, if you, I mean, you're, I'm trying to hire designers, so like I want to show, I want to show them what I've done, and they they need to get a feeling for the team. Um, I think hmm. it's always helpful, like if you have any kind of yeah. Work Imagine that you want to show it's a live gallery. It's a live gallery, changing. and you're always changing it. And because it's on the web, it never has to be, I mean, it's never final, final. Yeah. It's always a work in progress. <laughs> um, yeah. It was really good to see you work. I'm oh. curious what's going to happen to this project. You have it on the Behance page now. Yeah. Right? So um, if um, people are requesting for the file, mm -hmm. I'll be happy to share the file in complete form. I will just upload the XD file and some of my assets onto the Dropbox link on, so you can access that on my portfolio or mm -hmm. Behance mm -hmm. slash Miss Catlow. Mm -hmm. You can download that. Um, if you have questions on anything, please send me a message. And yeah. I'll see you on There's, the internet. Yeah, and if anyone has any final questions, uh, please let us know. We have two more minutes. And then we have, um, we will look at, we'll look at the schedule really quick because um, we don't want you to go away. So next, uh, for our final day, we have Lauren coming up in a few minutes, right at 11. Uh, and then at 1, Josh will be here. And they're also going to do portfolio reviews. So uh, feel free to send your website. Um, so two other lucky winners will talk to Lauren. And then we'll have two more people talking to Josh. So they might, I mean, they'll have different feedback because everybody, depending on where they're coming from, they have different... Yeah, different perspectives. Perspective. They've worked in a different company. Mm -hmm. but definitely, you know, I would love, I always watch the stream after I go so I can see what Lauren and Josh are talking about. Yeah. Always interested in, you know, everyone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kat. Thank I learned you. so much from you. Thank you for having me. 
<laughs> yeah, so we'll see you around. Don't be strangers. Thank you.